A bilge pump with an automatic float switch is a standard feature on most boats. It quietly pumps out water from our bilges. However, because it operates automatically, we often don't know when or how frequently it's running. By monitoring this information, we can better understand if there's a potential leak in our boat before it becomes a serious problem. For instance, it could indicate that the engine's raw water intake is leaking, or a seacock is faulty, or there's an issue with the plumbing. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make your boat's bilge pump smarter and more reliable with minimal effort. This setup will give you remote monitoring capabilities, real-time alerts, and data tracking, all essential features for enhancing the safety and efficiency of your boat. Turning your existing bilge pump into a smart pump comes with a lot of advantages. One of the biggest benefits is real-time monitoring. You'll always know the status of your bilge pump, whether you're on the boat or miles away, thanks to the remote access capabilities of our smart boat. You can set up alerts to notify you if the pump turns on, runs longer than expected, or experiences unusual cycles. These alerts can be sent directly to your smartphone or any other device connected to your system, giving you peace of mind wherever you are. Another key feature is the ability to track the runtime and cycle count of your bilge pump. This data is crucial for understanding how often and how long your pump is running. For this project, we'll be using the versatile ESP32. It will serve as a central hub wirelessly transmitting data from the bilge pump back to our smart boat system. This setup enables you to monitor your bilge pump in real time from anywhere. If you're not familiar with ESP32, don't worry, I have a separate video guide that walks you through the setup process step by step. Also at the end of the video, I have a few new tips and tricks to use an ESP32. And if you haven't set up your boat as a smart boat, I've also created a tutorial playlist that will guide you through the entire process. We'll also be using the INA219 sensor, a compact and affordable device that's perfect for this kind of project. The INA219 will monitor your voltage of the bilge pump, allowing us to accurately determine when the pump is on or off. It's easy to set up. Just connect it to the ESP32, connect one wire from the INA219 to your bilge pump and do a bit of configuration. What's also great is that with a single ESP32, you can connect multiple sensors, so you can keep expanding your system using the very same ESP32. If your boat is 24 volts, you can use the INA226, which is the big brother to the INA219. With everything set up, you'll have a reliable and efficient way to monitor your bilge pump, and you can easily expand the system as needed. So let's get started. Here is the ESP32. Please watch my previous video about how to set up the ESP32 and connect power supplies and integrate it with Home Assistant. Now I like to use one of these breakout boards when I use the ESP32. Um, it just makes it easier to work with connect wires and sensors and also makes it a little bit less, less fragile. It's, it's much more robust when it's connected to this board. So the pins, you line up the pins and you just push it left, right, left, right and you leave it in until the pins go all the way in. Just make sure you've orientated the, the pin numbers and the pin names the right way between the ESP32 and the breakout board. For this project, we're going to use the INA219 board. It's tiny, it's about the size of my finger. On the front, there are six tiny pins, of which we're going to use four. And on the other side, we have two pins, the VIN plus and VIN minus. Now, normally you can buy these and they're soldered, but lately when I looked on the web, most of them don't come soldered. In the description below, I have a link to an INA219 board which is soldered but if you have one that's not soldered you have to put it all together so these these tiny pins go into the, the six holes it's not symmetrical so the shorter pins go into the holes and the long ones stay out and the other end you have the the screw terminals 
which go into the two holes. Obviously the screw terminal is facing outwards. Now to solder I always put on a, a piece of wood. Now before I solder it I like to just put it on something. Here's a bit of blue tack or play-doh from your kid's room. So unless you have three hands it just makes it easy to solder. So what you do is you just touch the soldering iron when it's hot onto the pin, let it heat up for a few seconds and touch the solder onto the pin as well. So you heat, heat the pin up for a few seconds and then touch the solder to the pin. And it's quite quick. Don't add too much. Make sure it doesn't flow from one pin to the other. But it's, it's not too hard. You can do these really quickly. We do, we, we do these six. And then the other side we have the two, the VIN in, the VIN plus and the VIN minus. And there we go, the, all the pins are soldered on. If you don't like this, just buy the buy the one that's come comes pre-soldered. You just check all the pins are they're solid, they're not moving around, so we've done a good job. So when I do this sort of work, we're connecting now to an ESP32 and uh, to this board, I like to use these DuPont cables or breadboard cables. Um, you can buy a bunch for not much. So now let's connect the INA219 to the ESP32. On the ESP32, we have the three volt pin, the ground pin, the pin 22 and pin 21 will be used. So first we connect the orange cable to the three volt pin. Now this will power the INA219 from the ESP32 by three volts. Then we connect the brown cable into the ground and this will supply the ground to the INA219. And then we have the, the two data cables which are the I squared C data cables uh, for communication between the INA219 and the ESP32. So the white one will go into pin 21 and the purple we put into pin 22. So on the INA219 there's a, there's a bar here with the pins at the, at the bottom. So we connect them in the water. They're all labeled. So the first one's three volts. Next one's the ground. And then the purple is pin is this SCL from pin 22 and the white is SDA from pin 21. And then we have the positive cable, the 12 volt cable that comes from our bilge pump and we put that into the VIN plus terminal. Now you just connect this onto your bilge pump anywhere that, that's when the bilge pump is on it, it, it goes to 12 volts. So it could be the lead light or it could be the part of the pump. And then we just power the ESP32, but in this case we power it with a USB cable. If you have a 24 volt boat, you can use an INA226 and you just connect up the same, has the same, and you have a VIN or a, a VIN plus or a VIN terminal, you connect the red positive cable to the bilge pump. And that's it. So here we are in Home Assistant. We're in the dashboard for the Anchor Watch. This is the integration I developed which I showed you in the last video. You should try it out. It's really useful and it works really well. So let's first go to ESP Home. I've already set up the configuration of this and I've loaded it. So you assume you all know how to do it. So if you watched my previous videos on ESP32s and then loading the configuration ESP Home. So I'll just show you how it's set up. Standard uh, YAML configuration. So here we have the I squared C configuration, say which pins on the ESP32 we're using. So it's pin 21 and 22. Now I've got this global section here, which is basically so that the pump cycle count keeps it in between Home Assistant resets or reboots. Now I've put all the code into the ESP Home YAML, so we don't have any template sensors in Home Assistant. There's a number, you can do it a number of ways. I've just chosen to do it this way, so it's all in one place. So here we have the sensor definition for the INA219, and then we have template sensors configurations 
temper when the bilge pump is running. So if the voltage is more than eight volts, then it's on, otherwise it's off. So it's on is one and off is zero, and it checks it every one second. And then we have a bit of code here to, to figure out the, the pump cycles. And then we have a binary sensor to say if the, the pump is on or if the pump is off. And like with all the other configuration snippets I provide, you can go to my website and find the code for this, smartboatinnovations.com. It's under the code and you'll have a bilge pump YAML. If you scroll down and here you have the code that I just showed you. Just copy it or download the file. So the dashboard for this is like this. I have the pump status, which is the binary sensor, how many times it's cycled. And it's really nice. I can display in the dashboard the, the logbook. So you can see it's seven hours ago, it, it turned off and it turned on. So it was 41.11, so it went around for four seconds. I'll just turn it on now. And this, I have a manual switch. So you can see it's, it turns on and it's running, running, running. Oh, that beep is a verification I get on my phone to say the bilge pump is on. Normally on my boat, the bilge pump hardly ever goes on. It's only when I have a leak. And then you can set up an automation. So I've just set up a basic automation for the bilge pump. So if the bilge pump is on, send me a message or turn on the alarm. But you can do more. You can see how many cycle counts you have. It depends on your boat how long it normally runs for and then if it exceeds that threshold then you get it to send you a message okay so that was really quite easy to set up now i'd like to show you some tips and tricks for using esp home and esp32s so if we go back to esp home now the way this works you have an add-on which installs esp home and that allows you to install code and update code on these esp devices but once, for example, an ESP32 is flashed and you have the running code, you don't actually need to have this add-on, but keep it because it's very useful. I'm just trying to explain how this all works. Now, if we go into the, the YAML code for this, now, if you follow my videos and you flash a new ESP32 using the web tools, the web tools works really well, but it also installs a lot of extra code that you don't need, for example, Bluetooth and a lot of extra options. And that makes the size of the configuration that loads onto the ESP32 quite large. And sometimes it can slow it down and sometimes you might have problems loading it. So it's better just to have the bare, the bare minimum here. For example, like I have here, I have the ESP home, I have the name and the friendly name. I say it's an ESP32. It's the type of ESP32 dev and the framework. You have the API stands, which is empty. Then you have the whole Wi-Fi defined. Now I usually set up a static IP address just, just to make it more stable, but you don't need to do this. So if you, you don't have to have this manual IP section and then an access point in case if there's no Wi-Fi and you need to access your ESP32, the ESP32 will then create its own little local Wi-Fi access point and you can use these credentials uh, to log onto it. And this is not my normal password, by the way. Also with logging, Try not to have a logging level too high because if you put debug or, or even even higher, it really slows out down the ESP32. And, and again, sometimes it can cause problems. So I had to have the minimist level, for example, error. You then need to have this OTA or the air um, definition. So we're using ESP home. And that's basically all you need. So there's two parts to the integration of ESP home into Home Assistant. You have this add-on here, which allows you to, as I said before, edits and update code. And then you have the, the core part, which is the actually the integration, which is the ESP home integration. Uh, and this is what displays the entities uh, that are created in ESP home. It displays them in home assistant. Now, sometimes it happens that it just doesn't work. You, it seems like your code is working. There's no errors in ESP home that you can see in the, in the add on, but you, nothing's being displayed in home assistant. And sometimes you get a disconnect. Um, for example, maybe the device is not configured correctly here or it's, it's, it's got its knickers in a knot. So what you can always go and do in here, you can always go, so for this pumps one, you can always go in here and just, just delete it. You can just delete it if you like. Okay. And then we'll restart Home Assistant. 
And when Home Assistant restarts, it does a scan and will find that you have a ESP home device that isn't integrated. I'll just speed this reboot up. Okay, Home Assistant is restarted and you can see there's a new notification down here. This is just an easy way. It says we found a new device on your network, so let's check it out. And it says the ESP32 pumps. So all we have to do is click on configure and we're going to add this back to Home Assistant. And finish so if you go back here you can see it's back in i'll hope that extra information can help you out thank you for joining me today and exploring the incredible world of smart boating if you found this video helpful and informative i would appreciate if you hit the like button below and if you'd like to stay updated with more exciting content on boating and technology consider subscribing to my channel by clicking the subscribe button your support means a lot and helps me create more valuable videos like this until next time hasta luego.